And now joining us on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a woman who's written a book uh, that a lot of people are uh, are dealing with this issue. It's called A Disease Called Childhood, Why ADHD Became an American Epidemic. We're joined today by uh, Dr. Marilyn Waite from out in the beautiful state of California today. And she joined us by telephone. Doctor, good to have you with us. How are you? Thank you, Doug. I'm fine and happy to be here. Yeah, good to have a chance to chat with you for a couple of minutes. I think we've all... Uh, uh, heard uh, at least the last 10, 15 years or so, just maybe from the news reports, uh, uh, which has become a, kind of alarming, the statistics you give here of uh, how many kids are, are dealing with, how many parents too, obviously, but how many kids are dealing with uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It, it really has exploded, hasn't it? It sure has, from about 3% in the 1980s to 11% of America's children at, uh, at today, and also 15% of teenagers today are diagnosed with ADHD. And uh, mostly uh, mostly boys, right? I mean, I guess some girls have it as well, but it's, it's majority of it are, are uh, teenage or even younger boys, right? Yeah, ma majority of it is, are boys, and um, it kind of makes sense. Boys have a lot of energy. They, they tend to have more energy than girls maybe from hormones, testosterone, but you know, they find it more difficult to sit still in a classroom for eight hours, and um, they like to, to get up, move around. Uh, so, yeah, they, their, their behavior is more diagnosed. Yeah, I remember when I was in elementary school, even early high school, uh, not that long ago, but I don't remember seeing, there was always a, one or two kids that were a little bit uh, hyper, we used to call them, or a little energetic, but mm -hmm. didn't seem to be uh, as big a problem. Obviously, from your statistics, it has grown. Do, do we know why? Well, yeah. I mean, I remember in my classroom, um, a boy dipped my pigtails in the inkwell. Uh, he was, <laughs> you know, sent to sit in the corridor. It was a memorable experience. Today, he would be drugged as, as some sort of delinquent, but, you know, it was just harmless fun. Um, the, the, I think the cultural attitude has changed in, in, in the United States, that um, we are more prone to treating a behavioral and emotional problems with drugs. And uh, some of this comes from the fact that parents in the 1990s, uh, parents uh, were benefited very much by the antidepressants, by Prozac, and the new antidepressants, it helped them feel better. So that when their kids start acting a little differently than other children, not doing as well at school, they, um, there's a cultural attitude of why not give the child a psychiatric drug to help him along. And, and so it's a very different attitude than when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s. Not a single child that I knew in, in going through school I had taken medication, and now 11% uh, of our classrooms are taking medication for ADHD. It, it's a very strange thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember any kids when I went to school, never even heard anybody talk about that. And then, then later on, you heard the term Ritalin, uh, kids were put on right, that, but never right. when I was in school. So uh, so that, that, that is, I guess Ritalin was one of the first that I've heard of. I guess there's some others now that they put them on. Is that just more of a, a calm down kind of effect? Is that what they're supposed to, what it's supposed to do? Well, these drugs are actually stimulant drugs, and um, surprisingly, they're they the classified. Way, right? uh, they work the opposite way. It's kind of a paradoxical effect. They're stimulants, but they are used to calm people down, and, and they're actually classified by the International Narcotics Board as Schedule II uh, drugs, which um, are in the same category as cocaine. Hmm. So they are classified that way because they promote uh, dependency and, um, and, and, and can lead to addiction later on, which is proving the case with American um, high schoolers and college students taking so much uh, uh, Ritalin and Adderall. Yeah, you talk about in the book, a good part of it, uh, how from your studies and other studies as well, uh, children in some of the other countries, I guess in Europe, very France, I guess, uh, very little of this, right? They, they don't. They don't have this problem, or as big a problem as this. Very, yeah, very little, and and it, it's just the different cultural perception. Um, for they, they view these behaviors as normal childhood behaviors that children will grow out of, and the diagnosis process is much more careful. In the United States, a child can go into a psychiatrist's office or um, a pediatrician's office, and after completing a 15-minute checklist with his parents, the child can walk out with a diagnosis of ADHD and a prescription for a stimulant medication. 
In France, on the other hand, it takes eight sessions of careful interviewing of the child and the parents to arrive at a diagnosis, and even then, the treatment is not, the first course of treatment is not drugs, it's um, interventions in the family, is the child feeling stressed at home, or interventions at the school, is, is the child maybe too young for the class, or having problems with the teacher, so they don't immediately go to uh, prescription medication for childhood problems. In Finland, it's a... The ADHD is almost non-existent, 0.01%, percent mm. one one hundredth of a percent of children are diagnosed uh, and medicated for this disorder. Yeah, I always thought, uh, getting, going back when I was in school, uh, recess and gym class, that got rid of, a lot, rid of a lot of energy. Maybe the kids don't have enough recess or gym anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally with you, Doug. I mean, really, I've been say, uh, saying that a lot. Kids need to exercise. They need to let out their energy. And um, in Finland, for example, for every 45 minutes of classwork, a child gets 15 minutes of recess to run around. Mm. Now, that's treating a child like a child, not uh, expecting him to be a miniature adult. Uh, and the school day is only four hours long. And after school, the children uh, play sports, or they ride their bikes, and Finnish children consistently perform higher, much higher, on international testing than American kids. So really, by cutting physical education and recess, we are not doing children a favor. We're not doing children a favor by giving them more and more homework. Um, in fact, one New York City public school principal a couple of weeks ago banned homework from her school and she said that research showed that children after school should go out and play ride their bikes socialize with their friends socialize with their families that more more sitting and doing work was not in their best interests i always said that back then <laughs> <laughs> well i i was after school i played with my friends and ran around the neighborhood that's what I was going to say. After school, part of school was to line up what you were going to do after school, you know, hockey or football, whatever you're going to play. That, that was the point of it. Uh, maybe a little reading would be the only homework you'd want to give occasionally, but uh, I agree with you. And then a lot of kids nowadays are just playing the video games or on their phones or whatever they do now, and that's even worse. You're sitting at home doing nothing, acti you know, uh, energy-wise. That is, that is. Yeah. Exactly. It is wise. And research is really coming out now that these fast-paced video games and, uh, are overstimulating to a child's nervous system and can create hyperactivity and inattentiveness. Uh, they're really harming children's brains, and parents need to monitor the use. And I, I recommend to parents just one hour a day of video games or smartphone use um, and and have more time playing outdoors in nature. Nature calms a child down. Yeah, no doubt about it. I know you also talk about, about diet as well. I think diet obviously has changed a lot in the last 20 years or so, so that, that's a contributing factor. But I guess the biggest one is uh, really just not letting a child be a child, right? I mean, that, that would be that would eliminate 90% of it, I think. Don't you think? Exactly. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I'm expecting a child to be a miniature adult yeah. and not letting boys be boys and kids be kids. A disease called childhood is the name of the book, Why ADHD Became an American Epidemic. We've been talking with Dr. Marilyn Wedge uh, today. And uh, Doctor, I know the book just came out. Uh, do you have a website you want to direct people to, get a hold of you? Sure. It's MarilynWedgePhD.com. And parents are welcome to email me with questions through my website, and I'm happy to respond. Great. Doctor, pleasure talking to you. Good luck uh, with the book, and uh, hopefully we can talk to you again sometime. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Doug. A pleasure to be here. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.